power mill has been completely overhauled to provide significant new functionality and improved ease of use in the ability to measure and obtain distance and angles and point direction values. The power mill form fields that require numerical values now contain a hyperlink which launches a new graphical input measuring mode. Upon activation all forms will lower giving the user an uninhibited view of the graphics. This enables the user to measure from the model and immediately enter it into the form field. After a value has been measured the mode will automatically end and the original forms will be reinstated. The first example of this will be to create a tool that is capable of machining within this deep pocket. I will select a ball nose tool to be created. And the first thing I'm going to do is obtain the diameter and I'll do that from measuring the fillet radius at the bottom. We will see on this form that's, that's been raised there is diameter and length are both in blue and underlined. That indicates they are hyperlinked. By clicking this option this produces the new toolbar. The functionality which I'll read from left to right allows us to measure the distance between two points, to obtain the curve length, to measure a radius to measure a radius between three points, a diameter, a diameter between three points and both these are angular, the minor angle and the major angle. There are four areas here which are blanked out. The first three will allow us to measure the X, Y and Z components only. The fourth is a plane projection. In this instance I wish to obtain the diameter from three points. First second and third with the help of the interactive cursor. That's entered in the value. I'll reduce that to six millimeters diameter but I still wish to obtain the length. I can now measure not only the depth of that pocket, I can measure from the high point that's near that pocket but I'll do that using the Z component only. So by clicking the top surface and then clicking the low point within that pocket it will give me the exact distance between the two in Z. Obviously I wish to create a bit of clearance there so I'll raise that and just increase its length just a little and close. That is how easy it is to create a tool using the new hyperlinks. I now wish to enter a measured value into a machining strategy form. I'll select the tool I wish to use to machine. I'll indicate the area I wish to machine as well, which is this area here. I'll remove the surfaces, turn on the boundary, and turn the surfaces back on. I wish to put a raster pass over this area. In so doing, I want it to be at the angle that is shown on the front edge. I have previously set collision avoidance on these surfaces and the side to ensure only that top face is shown. The blue surfaces will not be machined when I create my machining toolpath. Only this area indicated in white at the top within the boundary. To measure this is straightforward and easy to use. I'll zoom into this area. We can clearly see this top edge. I have a predefined raster toolpath here which just contains the tool I wish to use and the thicknesses. You'll see the angle at the top and this is what I'm going to enter. By clicking the angle hyperlink, I can click on the top edge, I can click again, and when I go into plan view, I can now wake up that first point, dragging across, and that's giving me the angle I wish to enter. I press left click, and that angle of 100 
0.415 degrees has now been entered into that raster pass for me. We can see now how the toolpath is created at that desired angle. When we zoom in we can see all these passes now are at that edge by measuring the geometry that's contained within that CAD model.